Hi everyone. So real quick, way back in March, I would promised one of my writing groups that I would do a sort of presentation on my history and experience with doing self-publishing. And then COVID hit and we haven't really met in person since then. And I kind of pitched the idea of doing it as a vlog and having it for my audience on YouTube. So this is not only for them, but this is for anybody else that wants to, uh, that is curious about how self-publishing works through sort of my eyes and how I came to be a writer. My five-year anniversary is right around the corner. It'll be February 21st of next year. And it's crazy that it's been almost five years already. And I think it would be helpful for some to hear what my experience has been and to perhaps not only cover what the positive aspects are, but to also maybe provide people with things that would have been nice, that I would have liked to have known uh, while working on my first couple of books. So why did I decide to be a writer? Um, to be totally honest, it wasn't something that I had always thought about doing. For me, I'd always been a creative person, but movies were really more my thing. And something clicked in early high school. I got really into horror films, and I was introduced to Evil Dead 1 and 2. And I watched these movies, and I watched them with the commentary, and Bruce Campbell, Sam Raimi, Rob Tapper, the main actor, the director, and the producer. Hear them talk about making their film, I realized that these three guys were just a couple of dudes that went to high school together. And that essentially the first Evil Dead was pretty much a bunch of kids making a movie. Before that time, I thought movies were just kind of this thing that only, I guess, really wealthy people made. It wasn't, you know, people that, like me, could do. So it was really neat to hear these three regular guys talking about making this film together, and you could tell that the film was made by, I hate to use the word amateurs, but that's part of Evil Dead's charm, if you've seen the film, both the second and the first, but there's a lot of talent there, and it's clear that they just loved what they were doing. And I was like, I want to do that. That, That's when it clicked for me that I wanted to be a creative person and to have a career in film. So I graduated from high school and I went to school for business management. And I eventually dropped out of that and became more involved in theater and film. So I auditioned a lot. I wrote lots of screenplays and nothing really came of it. Auditioning around this area was very, very difficult at the time. And I realized that perhaps I would have to move out of Ohio. And I, my original plan was to move to California. So I, I started working about six, 60 hours a week and I did that for several years. I continued to study film and something personal kind of happened where I was like, I can't really move outside of Ohio. What can I do to still be a creative individual? And then I came across this writing thing. It was a contest. It was called the Stoker Craft Short Story Contest. And I I had a week off work and I wrote this short story called The Search for Christine Carpenter. I didn't win anything, but it was just so much fun. I was like, you know, something clicked where I was like, books are basically like movies, except I don't have to worry about casting. I don't have to worry about special effects. There's a whole slew of other things I, I would have to learn that I would worry have to worry about. But the reason I couldn't make movies at the time was because I could never get other in individuals to commit. I could never get other people to get on board and those that were on board would often cancel or I couldn't get schedules to match up and it was a whole frustrating thing but all those things did not were not a problem 
when it came to writing books. So I started working on other short stories and outlining a potential series. And I'd always been interested in horror. And so I worked on my first book, Revolving Doors, and my second book, Phantom Lock the Lost, simultaneously. And basically what I did to learn about the process was I just did took a deep dive into YouTube through other authors that had, that had done this already. And I did a lot of reading on both self-publishing and traditional publishing. And I met as many authors as I could that lived locally. And even some that lived outside of state, I Skyped with. And I just, and even to this day, I still do this. I try to absorb people that, I try to absorb information from people that are a lot wiser than I am. And that was my process through learning about self-publishing was talking to people that were that had done it already and the reason I went with self-publishing instead of traditional was because not necessarily because I thought it would be hard to shop these books to publishers but I was concerned about creative control you know my director hero John Carpenter uh, one of the things that that I was felt sorry for him was that there was a lot of studio interference sometimes in some of his bigger films and I didn't want to have that same experience you know so I wanted to choose all my covers I wanted to have control of my story you know for better or for worse I wanted to make all of my own decisions for the most part and to hire my own people hire my own editors and hire my own cover artists and going to self-publishing that also meant I would have to market the books myself. I would have to pay for everything. And that was a that was a definite definite trade-off and something that I think people should know about self-publishing before going into it is that it's a lot of responsibility. It's a lot of hard work. Not that, I'm not saying that traditional publishing is not hard work, but you know, self-publishing, everything is on your shoulders, pretty much. I mean, that's just the reality of it. But at the same time, I find that very thrilling and also rewarding too because, I mean, I built this basically all, all myself. And it's something that I'm continuing to build to this day and something that is continually growing. You know, it's it's been slow over time. Unfortunately, it's not, my platform isn't as big as what I would like it to be, but you know, it's, it's, it's a constant work in progress where I'm figuring out things that do and do not work marketing wise or even story wise or book wise. And so let's rewind a little bit. So I worked, I started working on revolving doors and phantom lock the lost. First I wrote both that I wrote both books and I started looking at cover artists and this is something that I learned the hard way. This is not the cover that I wanted for this book. I hired an artist and she's extremely talented. I think the art she did for this book and the Phantom Lock series is great. However, I when we started working on the cover for Revolving Doors, we had a strong disagreement on what the cover should be. And which was strange to me because I was the author and I was paying her to do it, but she had a a certain thing that she thought would be a better idea than what I had in mind. So I I was in a pinch because I was publishing this. I was really close to wanting to publish this. So I did something that I probably shouldn't have done. I, I, I went with one of her, I went with this instead and it was just like, I, I just want to publish this damn thing so that way I can decide that if it's something I want to do with the rest of my life. And looking back, I wish that I had waited and that I had hired somebody else to do the cover for this, that I had just worked with Emily, uh, the, the person that has done my covers ever since then uh, for the rest of my books. But, you know, this is the things that you learn. And um, as far as hiring an artist, what I did was I did I went on forums, I went on Facebook, I talked to lots of people um, throughout this process, and I wanted to hire somebody that I didn't necessarily know personally, because th then I would feel more inclined to be 
completely honest with them. And I, I made sure to check their background. I made sure to check their portfolio to make sure that they could, they, that their style was something that was, that, that would match with my kind of storytelling. And when I came across Emily Thornton, who has done covers for all of my books, except for Revolving Doors, uh, I connected with her pretty well. Like we talked through S Skype initially and I, we talked about her previous work and I, I don't think she had done book covers before, but I could see a lot of potential in her earlier work. And I was like, this has, I, I think that your style would be really good for my kind of writing. And I, and I've always been really happy with, with the work that she's done on my books. There's the Phantom Ox series. There's the Legacy. The Half Angel series. I'm extremely proud of her for doing these. Um, so I just love the kind of mesh of traditional book covers, but also there's a slight comic book feel to her art. And, you know, I, I grew up reading comic books, so, so I like that they're sort of uh, unusual in that way that they're a mesh of both those worlds and I have become friends with her since then but I'm but there's 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 that work relationship too where I, I feel 110 percent uh, ready to be honest with her if I don't like something and I, and I know she appreciates that so when you're hiring somebody to be your cover artist it's even when you cross all your I's and uh, dot all your T's, you're not always going to have 110% success. Um, the, you know, the, the, my, my first cover artist, we obviously, we had our dis disagreements. And then Emily, who I've worked with since then, uh, we've had nothing but a great work relationship. And I'm very thankful for that. And I think the thing that terrifies me the most is the possibility of me being like, Hey, I've got another book I'm working on and her saying that she has decided to move on from doing that sort of thing. But, uh, it's been a, it's been a great work relationship and I would strongly suggest doing all the steps that, that I've suggested, but also remember that it's not always going to work out perfectly and to kind of prepare yourself for that. And as far as, cost of book covers I I don't want to say too much because I think that's private information however I will caution you to use common sense um, but also don't be cheap I think that I will say I think Emily is worth every penny that I that I pay her to do her, to do the cover art and to do the character arts that she has done um, but I, that being said, I don't spend hundreds or, or thousands of dollars on character art. I mean, if you can afford to do that sort of thing, then go for it. But if you're working on self-publishing and you're poor like me, uh, that sort of thing isn't necessarily an option. So you have to kind of work within your means. And that's, that's, that's a strong reality within self-publishing. So we've talked about art. Now what about everything that's inside? So you've written the book and you've self-edited it to the best of your ability. What do you do next? Well, I usually do two things. I get a group of beta readers and then I work with an editor, a professional editor. And as far as beta reader goes, they're like a test audience. And you can either give them your, your edited book or your your like rough draft um it's like when you give them your rough draft make sure they know that it's a rough draft otherwise they're going to be trying to help you with grammar and stuff um but i would encourage you to tell them to, to just focus on story stuff because the punctuation and grammar is mostly for what you hire the editor for and typically the editor's gonna be better at it too uh, but beta readers can be friends, acquaintances. You want to make sure that they're people that you can trust. Um, 
you know, other writers is good too. I've had anywhere from five beta readers to 20. It's been different with every book. Um, some, some, just sometimes during certain parts of the years, I have, I've had struggles getting people to read my book. And again, that's just another tough reality. I have friends that say they have like over 50 beta readers, which is an insane amount. And then there's another friend who has just one or two typically. And it's self-publishing. You can do whatever the hell you want, but just kind of make sure that you're doing the best that you can. And as far as hiring an editor, I almost did the exact same thing that I did when hiring a cover artist. I went on online forums, Facebook groups, talked to lots of people, and I came across Amber. And Amber has been terrific to work with. I've worked with her since Phantom Lock the Lost. Gail Matson has worked with me on Revolving Doors and several other of my books as sort of a secondary editor. And I, I can't remember how exactly Amber and I met, but it was definitely through an online form. And I, again, kind of connected with her on a personal level, even though I didn't know her personally. Uh, we, just, we just clicked. And I think that's important to have with an editor too, is to kind of have the same interests um, it's like Amber likes the horror genre too. So I, I don't think when you're hiring an editor, if you're working in a certain genre, don't hire an editor that typically works. Like if for me, hi, work, hiring a, a romance editor would probably not work out all that well because he or she would not be as invested or would maybe not be as knowledgeable in that sort of thing. But I was lucky because Amber is a, is a fan of a wide variety of genres. So if I suddenly decided I wanted to write science fiction or even maybe even romance, I think that she would be able to handle that. But there are certain editors that are genre specific, specific, <laughs> excuse me. But again, I urge you when hiring an editor to look at their background. When I, before I hired Amber, I talked to other writers that she'd worked with before and they all were gave her glowing reviews and I made sure that they were that their works were published too I read excerpts of their work um, there were about four different authors that I talked to and I read their books uh, just to make sure that her work was solid and obviously I've worked with her all these years and I feel like her work and would I pay her to to help me make my writing better is is well worth it and again this is something that you have to consider when you're self-publishing is what can you afford and I think that having an editor is a must I've heard this from every writer that having an editor is a, is a must not and not hiring somebody that used to be your teacher or somebody that is related to you or a close friend because there might be that barrier where they're not going to be comfortably comfortable being 110 percent honest with you they're okay for being beta readers but for getting into the nitty-gritty and almost soul-crushing editing process you need somebody that, is, that can be an impartial party yes i mean i've worked with amber for close to eight books now we've become friends but she's not afraid to hurt my feelings and i really appreciate that and that that's what I need and as far as figuring out a budget I think as a self-published author I've heard people spend anywhere from 500 to two thousand dollars and if you can afford that go for it but again you have to stay within your own means I'm not gonna say how much I pay Amber um, but she's well worth what I pay for her and I think that I think it's something to consider. I would not skip out on having an editor. I think it's extremely important to make sure that your work is the best that it could possibly be. So I've heard of, I've heard of a couple of writers that do self editing or have done what I said before. They hire a teacher or a family member, and it shows. Like it really shows. It's it's like when 
you you watch a cheap movie and they skimp out on the special effects. It shows. I mean, and if you're going to go that route, I think another thing I would recommend is decreasing the price on your book because you want to make sure pe- you're not ripping people off. So I'm getting a little bit ahead of myself as far as pricing the book, but I want to talk a little bit about how the actual getting your book ready to print. I work through Kindle Direct Publishing and I it was originally called Create Space. It was a company that was owned by Amazon and they a couple of years ago they combined their digital and their paperback into one solid company. And I kinda of want to show a step by step process of how that actually works. So we're gonna switch screens here. All right, so after you make your account and you get all of your banking information and everything else taken care of, you're going to start, you're going to have a screen similar to this, except you're not going to have books. There will be a link that, that takes you to either the digital version or the physical version of your book. And we're going to look at what the physical version is because I always like to do that first because that makes the digital version, the Kindle version, a lot easier to do. And again, I'm going to do my best to give as much information as I can, but this will be sort of an abbreviated version just to kind of give you an idea of what exactly you're getting yourself into. So on this screen, you have the option for what language your book is in. You have the title, and then if you're working on a series, you can upload what series it is and say what number it is, which is extremely helpful for people that want to find certain installments. Next, you're going to be given your author credit, and you're going to want to put whatever name you're going to use, whether it's your actual name or pen name. Usually I use my pen name, A. Charles Ross. And then if you're co-writing this book, you can, it gives you the option to put in additional authors. Then after that is your description. I just put in something really simple just for an example, Um, but typically, it's pretty wide on what you can put into your description as far as for your book, but uh, I would recommend keeping it uh, under a paragraph. Next, we have keywords, and KDP offers up to seven. I usually try to fill out all seven if I can, but that's not always an option, but I would recommend doing at least four because this helps the readers not only find your book, but know if it's themes or something that they might be interested in. And then categories is a more condensed version of that. This also helps readers find your book and discover it. Next is uploading your book and formatting it. This is by far my least favorite part of publishing the book because it can be very frustrating at times. Now, KDP does tell you what dimensions to put your book, so that way if you use Word or whatever, you can try to get your pages to that format, so that way everything fits and things don't look cockeyed. So you're going to want to make sure to go through your book and make sure the chapters aren't off or there aren't words that are off the page or images that are slightly askew. And there's also a previewer that KDP offers where you can look through the book and it'll even tell you when things are off center. For example, in this instance, it's even telling me the specific page that there is an error on. And sometimes these even pick up spelling errors too. However, that's a complete nightmare for my for me because I have strange names and terms throughout most of my books. But in this instance it's telling me stuff that is outside the margins i can go i can go look at it and then i can go work open it up in word and fix it next you're going to work on your book cover now kdp offers several options for templates and i always like to use their templates they've got really good ones however there is an option to build a template yourself and i haven't done that yet so good luck if you do try to to attempt that but The important thing is that when you're working with your cover artist is to make sure that the dimensions of the of the cover or the the art fits fits there. Otherwise, you'll get things that are cut off and uh, that that's no good. But it shows you 
it'll show you where things are cut off too. KDP is pretty good at showing where things are going wrong. Then it'll show you what the book will actually look like and anything else that is left wrong with it. It's telling me, for instance, right now that my cover is outside the margins, so I'll need to fix that. But this will give you a general idea of what to expect once your book is in hand. Next is the big one, what everybody always asks about. What do I price my book at? Well, that's a complicated answer. I would recommend that you look at other books in your genre that are of similar size. And of course, try to consider uh, the cheaper your book, the wider audience you're probably going to reach. And again, like I said earlier, if you're kind of skimping on the editing and the art, you might want to consider that in your price as well. But it gives you different options as far as how much you're going to make as far as royalty. And it'll, it'll tell you exactly what you're going to make. And it even sets up how much you're going to make in other countries as well. And here's that example. This shows what I'm going to be making from different Amazon marketplaces all across the world. So once you've done all that, you don't have to publish the book immediately. You can actually order a proof copy, which I would highly recommend doing and going through and making sure that everything looks as it did online, make sure nothing's cut off, no pages are missing, uh, and to make sure that the cover isn't blurry. I would encourage people to do that. But uh, that, that's it. To typically, depending on how big your book is, those are, those are typically pretty cheap between the printing cost and the shipping costs to get your book to you but it's something i would highly recommend and then after if you're happy with it you can launch your book and you're ready to go so that is basically a condensed version of what it's like to publish through kdp if you have any questions please comment below if you have any questions about my journey or anything else i said before please let me know i'd be happy to answer answer anything um it's been it's been an interesting ride and it's been an interesting little experiment and it's it's been one of the biggest joys of my life it's brought me a lot of really great friendships and of course the creative process has been a lot of fun i hope to someday work more in the film industry but i will always write books because writing books has been terrific and it's just been a great creative force in my life and i'm extremely fortunate and thankful to have that in my life. So are you considering being self-published? Are you traditionally published? Have you been self-published for even longer than me? Comment below, let me know. Thanks always for watching. Bye.